and let's talk money and then I want to talk about uh, pandemic promotion as well but let's a little bit about that uh, about that money conversation um if we're talking twenty thousand dollars is it okay well you guys are going to start tomorrow so here's your check for twenty thousand dollars let me know when I'm famous or am I getting involved along the way are we paying in installments how would we might we expect that to go and what's what's a reasonable expectation so one thing we do look for with authors is are they going to partner with us in publicity. And so that means, you know, I'm going to email you and say, can you write a guest article? Of course, it's not feasible for everybody, but we are going to want to know that they're open to doing things to help promote the book because it's your baby. You know, we, we know it, but we don't know it as well as you do. So we want to know that you're open to doing interviews or doing, you know, you know, guest articles or whatever the case may be. Um, so it's super, yeah, checking out's not really an option. Um, I mean, it might be for some people, but for authors that we work with, we really want them to feel like they're a part of, of what we're doing. And it's not that they're doing the work, but it's that they're, you know, um, helping to make sure that places that we're reaching out to, that we have success reaching out to them because we might be reaching out to them about an interview. Um, I think we usually split up the payments into a monthly installment. So if it's $20,000 over five months, we'd probably do $4,000 a month. Um, but we usually schedule pretty far out. Like what month is it? February. So I think we're scheduling for like early summer, late spring, early summer right now. Yeah. Like May, June, July. Um, we do have sometimes have faster turnarounds than that, but I mean, we, we just spots book up. And, um, so we do try to, um, again, encourage people to reach out to us pretty early on so that we know we can get them fit into the schedule and everything. I assume that there's some sort of, or some amount of wiggle room depending on an author's individual situation, right? Yeah, for sure. Gotcha. Ah, and then um, as far as the pandemic goes, um, obviously that's going to change. I know school visits are, it's more or less virtual only right now until, but knock on what we've said a, a few times that hopefully we're heading out of this thing and hopefully we are, but there's yeah. could be another variant around the corner. Who knows with this? Um, what? Uh, how do you work around that? How has that impacted how what what you're able to do for people? So the good news is, is a lot of what we do is email. So that part of things didn't change a ton. Um, mail delays were a little tricky. Um, getting, I mean, there was a printing problems. You know, just literally getting books. So that was a little bit tricky. So, but we've kind of been navigating through that. And people, bloggers, reviewers, places like that have been really great about accepting eBooks when we just don't have print arcs available, or when a shipping container sinks to the bottom of the ocean with all the advanced reader copies of a book, which happened with the cookbook recently. I mean, it's just, you know. Um, there've been all kinds of weird bumps, but I will say the biggest change has been events. Like you said, um, you know, we have been setting up in-person events here and there. Um, but like you said, uh, we don't know what's going to change next week. So, I mean, when this airs, we could be doing in-person events all over the place. I don't know. Um, I hope so, but, uh, it's, it's changed a lot. So 2020 was very much, yes, let's do every virtual event possible because, nobody else is doing anything. Like, let's just do it. Um, but bookstores kind of took a step back, reevaluated at the end of 2020 and said, we're not making money off of this. <laughs> like we're having to staff these kind of things, have people moderate them, but people aren't necessarily buying books like they would for an in-person event. So 2021 was a little bit more, um, you know, there were fewer virtual events available. So we're still pitching virtual events, but we really needed to make sure that it was something that made sense or had a point of view. So we're not just pitching, you know, a launch event every single night because we don't want authors to um, show up to a launch event and, and not have anybody in their virtual crowd. That's no fun. So we try to make sure we pitch, you know, one big launch event. And that's just like we would do in person. Um, but, you know, now it's kind of virtually. And it's also depending on where they are. Some places are more open to doing in-person events than other places. So we kind of just evaluate as we go. Um, and authors have been very, very great about being flexible and just doing what makes the most sense when we get to that part of their campaign. I don't know if I thought I had uh, about money, not, not to focus on it, but um, if you're doing events, I think it's not unreasonable to charge speaking fees. If you want me on your panel, great. 
Uh, that's an hour of my time. Let's determine what that's going to be worth. Let's talk about what it's going to cost to have me for a school visit or whatever else. And when I say me, of course, I mean uh, whatever author we're, we're talking about. Is there a way to sort of try to budget that against the cost of the um, promoting? So we're saying, okay, well, it's $20,000, but don't worry. We're going to make sure that we get at least 10,000 of, $10, of that back in speaking fees along the way as we go. Is that even reasonable to be talking about? I don't think it's unreasonable, but I'm going to be very honest with you that no, you should not expect that. Um, place the budgetarily especially for schools there's not a budget for that kind of thing and you're going to miss out on a lot of opportunities if you're only looking for paid speaking opportunities and I don't know that we really would uh, to pr present that for for a school visits we would probably say that doesn't make sense for you to be quite honest um because you, I kind of think about it as like, this is an investment in yourself and you are, this is, this is, you wrote the book and this is the secondary part of being a writer is promoting yourself. And so this is not the part that you're going to, you know, you're not going to make money off of this unless you are, have won all kinds of awards and you're a bestseller. It's like maybe 1% of authors that, that charge that kind of thing um, successfully anyway. Um, so I would say that for the most part, those kind of appearances, I, I would not, I would, ex, I would tell, recommend to an author that they don't charge speaking fees or anything like that. And then the idea here is that because you're going to have been so widely promoted and covered, the book is going to continue to sell. And then the royalties will, will presumably make up that additional investment at some point down the road. That's the hope. Um, I mean, we definitely don't say, yeah, like, yeah, you're going to make your money back or anything like that. Um, it's definitely an investment into, uh, it's great for like, like we said, long-term author careers, because you're building a base. So for your next book, you're going to have all these people to go back to, hopefully see higher sales for that. For people who are one-time authors, you know, this is their, they have a book, they want to get it out of their system and then they're done. We do focus probably more on sales there than we would for maybe somebody who's doing um, who's hoping to have a longer author career. That's more of a, you know, a long journey that we kind of have longer term, um, goals for. So, you know, of course sales are important for every single book, but we want to make sure that we think about what does the future look like for somebody who's writing more than one book. Um, so we, we don't, yeah, I mean, we never promise like, yeah, you're going to make your money back or you're going to hit this certain number of sales because there's really no way to know, what that's going to look like down the line. No, I want you to be the one person in publishing that can promise a guarantee. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. Let me know if you find that person. I want to talk to them. <laughs>